Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What a beautiful day in New York City. So nice to be here with everyone. And I'm going to talk today as we go along. If you have any questions, you can just plop it in the room and I can open up the question box and see the chats. If you want to ask me anything, or you can always email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com. So welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about gaps. So there are gaps that happen every single day in the market. The market gap, stocks gap. It's interesting time to trade right now because we're seeing a lot of volatility in 2024. Some of it has to do with the overall environment of it being a presidential election year interest rates there's lots of things going on right now the market's been running up we've been making new highs will it continue that's the question so today we're going to talk about gaps and again this is what i do i do appear on tv i actually was just on fox on monday if you want to go to my youtube channel i try to post all of my tv hits on there if you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com or you can call me at 929-3200 GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So a lot of people want to trade because they want to make extra money. They like their job. They like what they're doing. Sometimes people want to trade because they actually want to get rich. They don't like what they're doing for a living. They want a new job. They want extra money coming in every month. But the thing is you need a plan of action to make it happen. It's the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent. But the problem is, if you don't have a plan, then how are you going to make it happen? You know, when you, if you look at trading, so many people look at it like it's gambling. You can't look at trading like that. You have to be very specific with what you do. You have to be very, very focused on what you do. And otherwise, you're not going to have the results that you want. So speaking of results I have in here are day trade results. This is year to date. And again, it's hard to believe, but tomorrow is the last day of May. Tomorrow is May 31st. So this is through uh, May. And so far this year, we're at 468247 for the year in the room. Most of my trades are shorts. We are going to talk about some trade examples in here, but most of my trades are shorts. Why? I prefer to short because stocks fall faster than they rally, okay? I also do options. I risk more of my options. These are our stats year to date for the options newsletter. The options newsletter is something that's a newsletter that comes to you in live time in your email if you want to sign up for it. The trading calls are calling live in the room. And again, I even have some trading live videos on my YouTube channel if you want to go and look there too. So let's get right into it. Many, many people start to trade. They don't make money right away. And then they carry this into you know, whatever they're doing. They say, oh my God, how am I gonna figure this out? The fact is no one wakes up and is born tomorrow and then all of a sudden is successful at trading. You've got to let go of whatever happened to you in the past and realize that it's part of the process. And you've gotta move forward at all costs. And the best thing you can do is move forward with a positive attitude because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need to, that positive attitude to make it happen. And the thing is, you can make it happen. You know, you're stronger than you think. People go through ups and downs in life. They go through different personal things, with divorce, marriage. People move. They get different jobs. They lose their jobs. They find another job. It's the same thing with trading. It's a process to get to the point that you want to be. And again, you have to keep moving forward. Once you lose momentum in your trading, the meaning, the uh, the, the will, the excitement, the wanting to do it, that desire, it's tough to get it back. It's tough to get back to that energy level. So if you've got momentum going to be excited, to trade, keep it going is the best thing that I can say to you. Again, you need a plan of action to make it happen, which we're going to talk about today, but keep them your momentum high. Now, when do I trade? I trade in the morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If that's something that works out for you, then maybe what I do will help. Do you like to make money quickly? Again, a minute out of trades fast. We're going to talk about some examples today. Do you have a passion or interest to trade the stock market? Again, that's what I do. I trade the U.S. stock market. I also work from home. And if this is something that you want to do for a career, again, you can do it for a career. Right now, it's a gorgeous, beautiful day in New York City. That's where I live. And it's a great time to trade gaps in this summer. Because who wants to sit for six and a half hours all day long when it's 80, 85 degrees out? I live in the Northeast, and again, we have four seasons. Summer is the time in the Northeast in New York City when you want to be outside. I took a walk this morning in Central Park. It is just, you know, it's beautiful here right now. This is not the time that you want to sit indoors 
for six and a half hours a day. So I try to focus on that fast, quick move right out of the gate in the morning. That morning time is I find that stocks that gap have 80% of the move in the morning, the first half hour of the day. So it just doesn't even matter. It makes sense to follow them all day long to four o'clock. So again, like I was saying, a lot of people want to do this. A lot of people want to make money. They're not successful. Why? Why are people not successful? They lack a consistent winning system, okay? You have to have a system that you can use to make money in any market conditions, whether it's bullish or bearish. You have to make have a system that you can use that has more winners than losers. I have losers. I showed you them in the stats. You have to have more winners than losers. And then of course you have to have some big winners. The big winners cover then the trades that lose. And that's how again you move forward. It's like taking 10 steps forward and one step back, three steps forward, one step back. And that's how you do it. It's like climbing a mountain, okay? But again, many people don't know what to do. So that's the whole purpose of learning from someone, following a mentor, learning what to do. And that's where you get the conviction. There was a trade, and I, I don't think I have it in this webinar because it was just a recent trade from last week we did, but you can look it up. It was HD. You can look at the daily chart of HD. We did puts in HD. It reversed when we did the trade. Actually, the trade was down. Trade was down a couple of days before it went, and then it was one of the best trades of the week. So it took conviction to hold the trade, which I did. I did, and if you understand what's going on and you have the right knowledge and you believe in the direction that you take the pick, you believe in the pick, you believe in the gap, you believe in the direction, again, HD was a put, so we shorted it basically, it worked, okay? If you have that conviction, it's gonna be able to help you make money even holding through trades that are down because if you took the trade, killed it, took the loss, you missed the profit, and not only that, you took the loss in a trade you could have wanted, okay? So that's where understanding and having education really can help you. And again, learning from someone costs money up front, but it really saves you money in the end because you're gonna have the guidance and then the knowledge and all of that, which you're gonna learn from me. So this was one of the biggest trades that we did and best gaps of the month of May. Again, May ends tomorrow, but we did Disney a bunch of times. Now let's take a look at Disney. There was news out in Disney, there was earnings on Disney, stock closed here, gap down, stock closed up here again. This was the first week of May actually, roughly around 117 and change, gap down in the morning, open, dropped, fell. So we shorted it. This was a trade I did, I called in the live room, 106.60 was the entry. This is a trade on margin. You would need a margin account to do this. There's prop accounts, there's retail trading accounts on margin. If you don't know anything about types of different accounts to take margin trades, you can Google it, look it up email me later but again this is something that is very feasible no matter what your size of account is but your size for the risk amount of your share quantity is based on your buying power so again we did an ad in this 106 this was a short average price was 106.30 exit was 104.60 profit was ten thousand two hundred dollars and again this is a day trade this wasn't even an option this was a day trade i was in out boom done boom and again what is a gap a gap is a difference between the close and the open. This is a daily chart. This is a daily chart of Disney. So this closed at four o'clock Eastern time and opened the next day at 9.30 a.m. in the morning, okay? And then it fell. So again, what I look for is in the pre-market, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do before the open. And then I rate it, I go through my system, I'm looking for the gap. And I say, oh, I like Disney. And I go through the process. I go through the whole shebang and I rate it and I determine, yes, this is a good short. And then we wait to the open and we short it. We also did puts in Disney, which were actually really, really cheap. Um, but again, a put is an option where you're basically, we buy the put and then we sell the put. It's a momentum trade. So everything I do is based on momentum. I'm trading momentum. Another trade we did, which I don't think I have in here either, which was a recent trade we did was NVIDIA. So we bought calls in NVIDIA. Actually, I bought calls last week in NVIDIA so far out from the strike and they worked. They worked, it gapped up really, really big on Monday or Tuesday, I forget, a couple of days ago it did it. No, it was Tuesday because the market was closed Monday from Memorial Day. It was Tuesday, the market, uh, the NVIDIA gapped up and it was at the dream target. So one of the benefits of doing options versus day trades is that with options, you can capture overnight moves in the gap with a fixed risk. So in other words, when you do an options trade, if you're risking $1,000, you can't lose more than $1,000. So many people that are trading don't understand that even though you know you got to get the direction right in option, you got to get the direction right in any trade you take, day trade, swing trade, anything, 
and you got to get the timing right too. But in an option, people don't understand you have a fixed risk that actually helps you. It's like the insurance. You don't have an unlimited risk. You know, and people were like, well, it's got to go within this number of days. Well, the trade's got to go anyways, or you're not going to make money. Same thing with my day trade. If I short Disney on the day that I do it, it's got to go that day. I'm not holding it overnight as a swing trade if it doesn't go the day that I short it on margin. Now, here was another one we did. This was May 8th. Again, this is a gap. Stock close here, gap down, open dropped. Entry was 63.15. Ad was 62.39. Average price was 62.77. Ad was 62.15. Average price again in another ad was 62.46. This was a nice trade. Dropped, exited at 61.75. So this was this day. So again, going back, you could have done shop here. You could have done a day trade. You could have done it again, done it again, done it again. It fell. So again, momentum means what? First, you find the gap. Then that was here. Okay, so this was May 8th. Again, the stock closed up here around 77 and change, gap down here in the morning around 63 something, solid in the morning, rated it per my system. That's a system that I use, I'll talk about in a little bit. And I said, well, this is gonna drop. So then if I know it's gonna drop before it drops, then I know I wanna short it. And again, whether you do a put or whether you do a, a trade on margin as a short is up to you. Depends what type of account you have, what you feel comfortable with. And again, momentum means you're going with it. You're going with it, just like I was explaining about NVIDIA. We went long NVIDIA, okay? And we didn't do a day trade in NVIDIA because that was very, very expensive. Actually, the, the calls were expensive, um, but it worked. Any questions so far? So again, it may seem, oh, well, how are you shorting when the market's so bullish? How are you focusing on shorts when the market's so bullish? It doesn't matter. If the stock's gonna fall and the stock's gonna drop and Disney's gonna drop, it doesn't matter if the market rallies. It doesn't matter if the market makes new highs, okay? And again, same thing with shop. So success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system, everything to do. So how can you become successful day trading? Number one key ingredient to become successful is you've gotta have a specific system and strategy you can follow every day for consistent results, that's very important. Everybody can make money by dumb luck every once in a while. It doesn't mean that's something that's gonna work all the time. Training success and financial success in the market is by pure design, it's not by accident. What does it take? It takes having a niche. So for me, the niche is fast trains, the niche is also shorting, okay, and then gaps. I pick the stocks by going through and looking at everything that's gapping in the morning, which, there's a million things, okay? So that's not hard to find gappers. Then I go through my 26 points and that is what I teach in my class. That's a 14 hour class that I do once a month, which I'll talk about the next date, which is in June at the end. So I go through a point system. That's how I pick the best one. Finding them is easy. Picking them is a process, which is the whole, which is the whole system. So again, it's the methodology, like talking about the HD. The HD per my system, the, the rating system rated good. I had 100% conviction that it would work, but it didn't work the second that I wanted it to. And that's why people are getting tripped up on this market. That's exactly why people are so back and forth with their trading. Not everything goes right away. I would love it if everything went right away. I would love it with everything right right away to the dream target, like NVIDIA, but that's not reality. That's not the market. People say, oh, they screwed us. They did it again. No, it, the, you know, you have to give something a chance to work. If you believe in it and have conviction, you will. If you don't, you'll kill it and you'll short it and go long and short it and go long it. And you're basically then gambling and you're just guessing. Okay, but what I'm looking at when I'm reading the gap and when I'm doing the rating systems, I'm looking for institutional money that moves stocks in gaps. And we have another question here. Um, somebody's asking me about CRM. I didn't look at CRM the other day, so I don't think it was anything I was interested in. I entered the position uh, pretty quickly in the first five, 10, 15 minutes of the day. Uh, what computer requirements? You have to have a live, a charting package, which you would get with the broker and open an account, you have to have live data. Uh, you have to have the daily chart. That's where you're seeing the gap. As far as computer requirements for that, as long as you have to have internet. But again, you know, you can get live charts 
at any broker once you fund an account. And you, you, know, you can get that with, a, with an options account or a, a margin account at any retail broker or prop broker. And they'll even give you, you know, a tutorial. They'll tr brokers will train you on how to set your charts up and do all that because they want your business if you don't know how to do it. Anyways, getting back to how do I figure this out, I figure this out with my Golden Gap rating system. So it's a 26 point checklist, which is what I teach in my class. So this is the meat and potatoes of what I do. How am I finding it? How am I picking it? And what is the whole philosophy? I studied philosophy in college. I was a philosophy major. What's the whole philosophy behind this? I'm looking for institutional money. Again, I like to understand why is this going to work? Well, it's going to work because it follows institutional money in the gap. That's what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it, okay? Gaps are an event. Like, hurry, 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 this is an emergency. That's what happened in Disney. That's what happened in Navinia. It's rare that you see panic buying, but you did see that in Navinia, and actually you're gonna see more of it. We In Disney, we saw panic selling, okay? So usually I like to short, I prefer to short because you get panic when a stock falls. It's rare you get panic buying, but actually that did happen in NVIDIA. Actually, it's happened a couple times in NVIDIA this year too. But anyways, that the panic is the sense of urgency. Again, could be for shorts or longs, but it mostly happens on the downside, which is why I prefer to short. And an action then is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. And again, this is why I like to do it. Uh, Philip saying are these earning gaps. Shop was and Disney was, but some gaps are non-earnings gaps. The gap that happened that we played out in the video on Tuesday was not an earnings gap. You could say that was a news gap. So there are news gaps, there are earnings gaps, there are gaps that happen with the sector. Um, like if there would be an uh, some kind of accident in one of the airlines, that would be, I guess you could say that would be news and then they, all this whole sector could be down, something like that. Actually, we've seen that this year. We've seen that this year with Boeing. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And again, it's the control. It's the control. Power money controls stocks in the market. Why is the market running up? Why is the market making brand new all-time highs? Because institutional money, hedge funds, big banks, big professional traders are buying the market or they're not selling. So they're, they bought into the philosophy that the economy is strong, that no matter what the Fed does, it's not going to raise rates anymore and in fact could lower rates or the economy will continue to be strong. So no one that's long is selling and people are still buying. The purpose of the rating system is to help me determine who is in control. Okay, If you get on the right side of control, it's very easy for you to make money. If you're on the wrong side of control, you will lose money. You saw that if you watched the Reddit stocks, this was like two weeks ago or whatever, uh, there was a big move in one of them and it fell flat completely. Why? Institutional money didn't buy in. You didn't buy into that GME. So it went, fell flat. Okay. Retail traders can temporarily take hand or hold of a stock, but they can't hold on to it, whatever the move is, down or up, for any length of time. So the only way to make money in the market consistently, actually, is to follow institutional money. But you got to learn how to read it, find it, and be selective on what you're doing. Because not every bearish gap down is a short, just like not every gap up is a long, like NVIDIA. Um, here was one that we did, gosh, this seems like a while ago now, it's almost a month ago, EXPE. Stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. We shorted this here as a day trade, 120.30. Again, I called this trade live in the room. Eggs was 118.10, I could have held this longer. I just wanna show you here, this went all the way down, came all the way down to 115 and change. So I like to get in and out quick. You can halt some of the trades down, longer if you want. I prefer not to, to, to trade all day. That's my choice. But again, you could get more out of these. Same thing with the options. You can, you can hold them longer if you want. You know, again, I like to do the fast trades. Take it, get the move, book it. Take it, get the move, book it. That's what I like to do. Then I'm, then I'm out before the economic data comes out, before the Fed talks, before there's any White House press conferences or something happens. And again, you never know. It's never over to the fat lady sings. That's a saying we had in the mortgage industry when I did mortgages. It's never over to the loan. 
is actually funded, meaning people will go and sign papers at their, when I did mortgages, people will go and sign the papers, you say, oh, it's done, it's closed. No, it's not. It's not done until the bank wires the money. And you know how many deals have fallen through but people couldn't buy houses or the loans didn't go through at the end, they, they fell through at the end, even refinances because people ran out, bought a car, spent money on a credit card, and then the bank pulls their credit before they fund it to make sure they didn't take out any new debt. And then if they find out that they did and they don't qualify, then they don't fund the loan to buy the house. There's just, I mean, again, there's so many times we've said that. It's never over to the fat lady sings. You could be up so much money in a trade, and until you're out, the money isn't yours. It's not booked. So you gotta be aware of that. Again, you gotta be aware of that. Um, someone's asking another question here. Is there a minimum you would need to start trading the system? How many trades do you need to execute in a day a week? For day trades, I'm usually doing one trade a day. If I do two trades a day, I probably got stopped in the first trade in the morning and had to do a retake. So one a day, which is not a big deal. As far as your risk or the size of your account, you have to determine your risk based on your cash. So if you're gonna do day trades, you have to have a margin account. You can go prop and open up a prop account with as little as $2,500. If you're gonna open up a retail account, a margin, you need 25,000. If you're gonna do options at a retail place, you need 2,000 minimum, but then you're not gonna be able to risk $3,600 a trade. You don't have to. You could do 100 shares, you could do 200 shares. You could risk half as much as I'm risking. You could risk more. So again, I've had people that have started out with very small options accounts and done some of these trades and made very good bang for their buck. Disney was one of them. We, we did some Disney's that were so dirt cheap, I can't even believe how cheap they were, but we did them, we did them out with farther out strikes, which is one of the reasons that they were really good return uh, on investment trades. So you gotta size yourself what you're doing. I might do three options on a Monday, and then I may do no trades on Tuesday and no trades on Wednesday. So the options is not as spread out because I don't know what I'm gonna get. And again, it depends how many I get. If I call five trades on Monday that are options and you can't do them all, then do one, do two, do what you can. It's the same system, it's implementing it, the same system. If you have a small account, you gotta build it up. You gotta build it up. And again, if you're losing or not making any money or break even or only making a little bit, the idea of making $100 a day or $500 a week or what equates to $2,000 a month, that's a lot if you've been losing. It's the consistency. That's where people get in their head so badly and they just, they hurt themselves. It's like walking across the street when the light, when the light is red, don't do it. A taxi cab can come around and hit you and he's not gonna see you and you cross the light when you shouldn't have. Don't hurt yourself. Don't take more risk than you're willing, that you're willing to lose in the trade. One, so you can let it play out, and two, so you can keep going. Don't blow up your account. So many people do that. People are doing that in trades, and they shouldn't, and you want the longevity. The idea is the consistency. The idea is the longevity. Um, someone's asking, how do I know that, where it's going to go? I don't know where it's going to go. Do I see it? But after I see it, then I'm, the prediction is what it's going to do on the live day. I'm not getting in before the gap occurs. Now, we were in NVIDIA before the second gap occurs. We were. But again, that, that can happen sometimes we're already in something. But did I know Disney would do this in the earnings? No, but I saw it. And the system that you would learn from me if you do the Golden Gap class is you will rate this and you'll say, oh, it rates good. It's going to go down. Otherwise, Disney could have gone up. It didn't. But if it rates bad, you won't short it. So if I rate it and it rates under 20 points per my 26 point system that I'm not going to short it I say, oh, this is going to reverse, you know, and then I don't want to do it. Anyways, entry for this was the 15th here. Entry was 1 and 260, shares was 3,500, risk was 3,150. We did an ad, got the drop. This was a really nice trade. This kept going though, came all the way down, went all the way down to 101 and change. This was this day here, the 15th. So really, really nice short in Disney here. Really nice short in Disney here. And we were ready in puts here when this broke. So, I mean, it was a, it was a good stock to short, to do puts and to do, to do a million things in actually. But it's all about the control. Think about it. it may, you're like, oh my God, I totally get it now. It's a control, it's a control. Who is in control of the market right now? The bulls or the bears? The bulls. Who is in control of NVIDIA right now? The bulls or the bears? The bulls. You're like, okay, it makes perfect sense. So it's the control. 
It's the control. That's what you want. There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market, okay? So success require, requires a plan, a 26-point checklist. That is what you need, and that is what you learned from me in the class. Uh, Philip has another question here. Philip, I'm talking about a margin account. If you don't know what a margin account is, then that's something you got to learn. So, for example, if you're, you're, you're referencing the cost of the position, if a position costs, and I'm just going to quickly say this here, I don't want to get too off target here because i got to watch my time. A position costs, if you take a $100 stock and you want to short 1,000 shares, and that, that costs $100,000 in buying power, you don't need 100 grand to take that position, Philip. you got to Google what margin is. If you're on a four to one margin account at a retail plan, you need 25 grand in the account to take that position. If you were at a prop place and you had 10 to one margin, for example, you need $10,000 in the account to take that position. Your risk is not any, any way even near what it is, even the cost on margin, even the risk. If you put a stop in, and again, I'm just making this up, if you put a stop at 100.50, and you risk $3,000 in that position, and it stops you out at 100.50, you will lose $3,000. You're not going to lose the cost of the position if the cost of the position was 100 grand, even on margin. So that's something extremely important. And if you don't understand margin, well, you got to read about it, you got to learn it. But that's like saying that every single person that day trades the market or trades on margin has to have like $10 million in their account. They don't. That's not true. So you've got to understand margin. Everyone trades on margin. And one of the reasons I use stops is because I don't want an unlimited risk. I don't even have an unlimited risk in options. Like I was saying, the, the options, I'm taking the risk and I may risk more for my options trades because I want to do trades like NVIDIA that might cost you know $2,500 for one contract. But the fact is that that's all I'm going to lose in that. And if I have a stop in, it's a limit order stop for a day train, I'm going to get hit out. I'm going to get hit out of it, and then I'm going to lose whatever the risk is. So, for example, if I short something, if I say 50 by 30, 50 by 30 could be a 30 cent stop. So then, then I times it by the share quantity. And, for example, again, if I wanted to short 10,000 shares of 30 cent stop, it would be $3,000 risk. Does that make sense? I'm only going to lose $3,000, even if it costs me 200 grand to take the position in buying power. And, again, depends what type of account you have for that if you get four to one margin or 10 to one, but everybody trades on margin that actively trades. Professional traders trade on margin. They're leveraging themselves. That's what makes day trading so profitable. But again, that's why I put the stop in. The stop is like my insurance, my insurance so that I will get hit out, you know? And it's also why I don't trade low float stocks that are really thin and why I didn't trade any of those Reddit stocks. You know how many times those Reddit stocks got halted? I was on TV once or twice talking about those. They got halted so many times that week came out. It was scary. I can't even believe that people traded them. They were halted all the time. We're, we don't trade things that get halted. We don't trade things that don't have volume. We don't trade things that are low float stocks. And we don't trade things that have like a million dollar spreads. In fact, they stopped the margin requirements on those stocks. That was like two days, I think, or one day into that week, then every single broker made full on cash 100% requirements because they were so worried about what's happening to all those stocks because they didn't want people to lose. They didn't want to lose. Um, let me see what time it is here. I'm not only trading on earnings. I said that. I'm trading on any gap for any reason, news or whatever it could be. Um, I didn't even look at what's out tonight yet because it's 11.45 in the morning. <laughs> Whoever asked me about that. Um, making money trading is about consistent and trade selection. So making money trading is about getting the trade right. Right trade selection. Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutional money. Being on the side of institutions increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends and the market trends. And institutions move stocks either up or down. If you want to get paid, the key is to be in the trade with the side of the large money moves. So how do you do this? you got to make good choices. you got to find quality trades. you got to have a solid system you use every day. And you get good at it. And you got to pick the right stock and get the right entry as well. So my system tells you 
The how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and, strategy and system that's profitable. For me, it's a system that it took me about three years to create, okay? I call it golden gaps because I feel like it's like finding gold in the market when I find something that's really, really good. Like for example, Disney or Shopper or any of the ones that we're talking about here. Then I rate it, I trade it in the direction of the gap. I could do a day trade in it or a put. And then when do I do it? When do I enter it? Early in the morning, into the open, when it sets up and triggers. Again, could be right out of the gate, could be five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the open. So someone was asking about, again, margin. If you have a small account, you can grow it. You know, that's totally, totally doable. I get that everybody wants to make a lot of money right away, but if, you do, if you're losing and you don't know what you're doing, then you have to start slow. Your confidence will grow as you're having green, 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 a series of green days. And that is just as important as the money because that you're gonna need your confidence to trade. So many, so many traders are not confident when they trade. Again, I'm an extremely confident person. I've been doing this for a long time, 16 years. I also made the system. I created it. So of course I have a lot of confidence in it, you know, but that's what allows me to hold things sometimes to bigger targets or sometimes through wiggles and jiggles like HD. But again, it's very important to make good choices and be thoughtful. Be thoughtful with your trading. Be thoughtful when you decide to sign up for a class. You know, when you're coming to lectures like today, when you're listening to all these people, think about what people are saying. You know, nine times out of 10, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You know, you're like, if someone says, oh, well, you can make, you know, $10,000 risking 100 bucks in a day. It's like, that's not realistic. I'm showing you advanced trader risk on these stats. I could show you beginner trader risk. I have that in some of the marketing emails. The reality is you're not gonna run out and make 100 grand in the next 30 days if you don't have a decent risk in your account. You're not gonna even be able to do it in the next three months if you don't have a decent sized account. So you know what? Start with what you have and go from there. The idea of people making all of this money like you saw with some of the Reddit stocks was an anomaly, a once in a lifetime thing that blew up in everybody's faces that did it in the last two weeks and some people that did it three years ago. It worked for a couple of people. The stock market, the idea of the stock market is not to get rich in a second, in one trade. The idea is to become wealthy and to grow your wealth and to become rich over time. It doesn't have to take forever, but again, it depends how much money you have to start. And again, you gotta learn it, you know, but the sooner you start, the faster you're gonna learn it, the faster you're gonna be where you wanna be in three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. Look how fast time is flying. I cannot believe that Saturday is June. Almost half the year is over. I feel like I just took down my Christmas tree, which I literally did like the week of Easter, you know, I mean, Honestly, I can't, before you know it, it's going to be the New York City Marathon, which is in the fall, November. It's just, this year has gone so fast. And, you know, every day that goes by that you're not working towards your, achieving your goals and your dreams, you're just losing time. And, and the lifestyle that you want to have, which is the freedom to be able to do it and make the money. Anyways, a system that's consistent, rel reliable, will help you with the fake outs, the fake outs, because you need the confidence and you need the conviction. Now let's talk a little bit here about options. So I have an options newsletter. This is what it looks like, just so you know. Here's a symbol, the strike, the expiration date, and the type, okay? So you get this in the morning. I sent this out right into the open, and this was the Starbucks. Stock close here, gap down, and again, this was May 1st, okay? So we bought puts. So what happened with this one here? $1.60. Now again, options are not on margin. So all you would need is $1.60, okay? You could have spent 160 bucks and done this. That's it, you could have done it and made money, okay? Now again, I have a higher risk here, but again, you could have taken a smaller risk. You could have taken a risk of 1280. Here I did show a smaller risk here. I made 1120, it's a good trade. 88% return investment. So if you don't have a margin account, you can buy a put and then you sell it. And again, it's the same concept. It's a momentum. Starbucks dropped, it fell. A put is a short, okay? The whole idea is if you know what somebody's gonna do before it does it, you can make a lot of money. This isn't about me predicting the earnings. Someone was mentioning earnings tonight. I don't know what they're gonna do. I'm not trading them before they happen. I don't know what those people are gonna say in the earnings. And if I did, I wouldn't know how they react. I wait and see the gap and then I rate it after I see it and then I decide if I wanna do it 
And if it rates good, then I do it on the day, on the day after 930, okay? So the rating system looks at 26 points on the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock, direction to read it correctly. Here's another option we did. This is Boeing. This feels like a while ago. We did the Boeing 165 puts. This was cheap. This was cheap. This was a great trade though. 243% return on investment. Again, this doesn't really even matter how much you risk. It's a winning trade. But this is again a flip of more than 200%. And that's, you know, that's good. So let's look at the Boeing here. When did we do this? Um, what was the date of this one? 424. Here, here was the sell off. Boom, doom. There it was. So this was like a month ago. We've been shorting Boeing a lot this year. It's been working, actually. We did a fast trade in Microsoft, which seems really funny now. This was a month ago, 429. We did the 405 Microsoft puts. These were, you know, a little bit pricey. But again, Microsoft is over $400 a share. This was a good, solid trade. Again, 50% is a good trade. But you could have risked, for example, $1,100 here. Made $1,300. You're in, you're out. Again, you're in, you're out. I'm not taking an option on a Monday and holding it every single day to Friday. If the trade goes the same day, I'm out. If it goes the next day, I'm out. It's the momentum. It's the idea of the momentum. So this, this was a good call. We did this here. Boom. There it is. Right there. Um, someone's saying something about something. I have the stats at the beginning. At the beginning. If you want to go back to the beginning here, I'm sure this is being recorded. I have all the wins and losses. At the beginning in the stats, the losers are in parentheses with the tracking at the beginning. I don't know if you signed in late, Michael, but the winners and losers are in the stats in the beginning of the lecture. Any other questions here? I only have a couple more minutes. Anyways, you have to use proper money management. We talked about stops. We talked about the idea where you have to win more than you lose. And again, it's really about, you know, finding the quality. So I'm looking for one to one in my day trades. 50% is good in my options, but I'm really trying to get every option I can to 100%. So what do you need to make trading work? Number one, you need a good strategy, the golden gaps. Number two, you need a method and structure to enter and exit the picks, which I teach in the class. Number three, you need monetary goals. Set your goals. Start with what you have right now and work it up and build it up. It's the whole idea of the reliability with the system and sticking with one thing. So I've gotten very deliberate in my choices with trading, which is how I'm able to trade, run the room, call all the options, do it at the same time because I have a high level of conviction. I'm very deliberate if I like it. I say I have 100% conviction. It's th this thing, this thing, this thing. We're going to do it. And then we just go and then we do it. Um, I don't do anything with that, whatever you just said, Michael. I pretty much do my own thing. I live in my own bubble and it works. Because then, then I'm not, um, then I can focus on just what's happening in the chart. Like if you sat and read, you know, all of what the earnings says, you go through all the fundamentals. What if it doesn't even match up what's going on in the stock? You know, you can get distracted by many, many things that are out there. The number one thing that you have to focus on is the price action. That's all that matters. If the stock's going to drop, then you got to be short. If it's going to rally, the only way you're going to make money is if you're long. And that's, it's really just as simple as that, which is what we're talking about, about momentum. you got to get with the momentum. It's the momentum of the institutional money. So get the proper education so you can do well and rely on a mentor helps. It's that you can do the system over and over and over again. So I teach a class once a month. It's called the Golden Gap. It teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches you what direction to play the stock. And it also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day taking the entries and exits. And I call the trades in the live room. If you want to ask me for help about sizing or size of accounts or creating a money manager plan, I'm perfectly happy to do that. But again, I'm calling the trades in the newsletter. I'm calling the trades in the room and you have to size yourself for yourself. And the idea of learning it and I'm going through and writing the gaps in the morning, you're supposed to do it too. I know people come in the room and they haven't rated everything, but the idea is that you should. It helps you get the conviction to do it. So if you're interested, I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full, complete system to trade, and the class is a full two-day course in how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks. 
that our professional bearish gaps. The class is June 8th and 9th, so not this weekend, but next weekend. That's the class for June. Class is online. It can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class tuition is $69.99. I do a trends course where if you do these two, you save $500. That's Tuesday, June 11th, and you get the weekend classes at $79.99. And I'm doing a Memorial Day special, which I'm actually doing through tomorrow. It's been running already. I've been running it for a week. <laughs> if you sign up for the Golden Gap Course Combo, the, which is three classes, which is $79.99, you will get the options newsletter free for one year, the trading room free for one year, the market report subscription free for one year, and the Gap Options course. So I'm running this through through tomorrow. If you're interested, you must email me at melissathestockswish.com to sign up. Any questions from anyone at all? I'm trying to watch my time here. Any questions last minute here before I'm done? How's everybody doing? Beautiful summer day. Dan's doing great. Listen, be careful out there, people. Be careful if you're trading. If you have questions, email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. Go to my YouTube at The Stock Swoosh. You can follow me there. I have videos and I have nature videos of Central Park, which I've been putting on there. It, I, today was an amazing morning for me. Uh, I saw a red-tailed hawk sitting on this, sitting on this stoop this morning I just posted the video. It's probably gonna go viral. I saw him like he was a foot away from me, this baby red-tailed hawk, and I got this video. I tell you, I would, I would never be able to live the life that I'm living right now if I wouldn't be trading the stock market. It was a rough road for me when I started and I had no idea how to do it, but I taught myself how to do it, and now here I am, you know, 16 years later. So for people that wanna give up, the best advice I can say to you is never give up. Never give up. All right, have a great day, everyone.